My name is Natalie Granados and I'm the Special Collections Conservator at Yukon Library. I created these illustrations and time lapses to accompany Yukon Library's disaster plan. In this video, I'll be talking about mold. A couple of health reminders before we begin. Treat all mold as potentially hazardous, as it can be for those hypersensitive to it, whether dormant or not. In general, persons with allergies or respiratory problems should not handle materials affected by mold. Limit the amount of time spent handling or cleaning mold due to respiratory stress, ergonomics, and fatigue. And of course, always wear appropriate masks, gloves, and protective clothing to avoid breathing in mold residues. Mold spores are everywhere, however, mold can begin to grow in a few hours in a warm, moist atmosphere. Environmental conditions should be stabilized as soon as possible at temperature and relative humidity levels that will reduce the risk of mold growth. Temperature should be reduced to 65 degrees Fahrenheit or below and air circulation maximized. And relative humidity, or RH, should be monitored and ideally reduced to 55%. Relative humidity is the amount of water in the air related to the maximum amount of water the air can hold at that temperature. This illustration shows us how that happens. When the temperature is colder, the air's capacity to hold water decreases to a teacup size, which means less water makes the teacup spill over. As the temperature increases, the teacup turns into a mug a pitcher and on a hot 80 degree day it will grow into a bucket and that original amount of water that spilled over in the teacup will now sit on the bottom of the bucket and will seem like nothing at all. This explains how at 50 degrees we have a higher RH of 100% than at 80 degrees when the RH is only 42%. When outside air is cooled inside your home or office, the same amount of water is present in the air, but the bucket shrinks into a teacup, meaning the relative humidity is much higher inside. Conversely, if cold outside air is heated inside, our teacup will grow into a bucket and the resulting relative humidity will be much lower. Keeping this information in mind will be useful when water damages occur in air-conditioned spaces during summer months or heated spaces during winter months. Active mold is wet and slimy and needs to be dried to be removed. Dormant or inactive mold is dry and powdery and can be cleaned using a HEPA-fitted vacuum. Immediately freeze material that cannot be dried or cleaned within 48 hours. Keep in mind that freezing does not eliminate mold, rather it stops growth. In other words, it is possible to make active mold dormant by freezing. However, dormant or inactive mold can become active once more by placing the item in an inadequate or humid environment. Other things to keep in mind are that refrigeration is not a good substitute for freezing. Lowering the temperature without freezing raises the relative humidity and will introduce more moisture. Use paper to isolate mold damage items in transit or to protect items when freezing. Use plastic only if the item will be frozen in less than 24 hours to avoid creating a microenvironment that promotes mold growth within the bag. I hope this information on mold in collections was useful to you. Yukon Conservation thanks you for watching.